Hi everyone, it's Sam back with another Bullet Journal Weekly. This week we're creating this beautiful spread with two mermaid queens complete with their crowns. It's actually inspired by a piece of artwork I did last year of a woodland fairy queen where her crown was made up of all sorts of woodland and nature type elements and I really wanted to do the same thing but for my mermaids. So let's get started. So first up, I need to create this Dutch door for the spread before I even start. So before we really get going, I'd urge you to consider subscribing, commenting or liking this video if you're enjoying this content or any of my other videos. It just helps YouTube algorithm find us and help promote us. So we really would appreciate it. Now on to drawing our mermaid queens. I wanted my sister queens to be mirroring each other with their heads ever so slightly bent forward. So you can see the line, the vertical line for the direction of the head is slightly at an angle. The rest of the guidelines are from the Loomis method of how to draw a portrait or a face. Take a look at the video linked above where I go into more detail about how the Loomis method works. But essentially it's a way of mapping out the human face. The brow line for any face always sits halfway down the circle. And the distance between the brow and the hairline is the same between the brow and the base of the nose and then the nose to the chin. So it's three equal sections going down the face. The center of the nose and mouth always sits on that vertical line for the direction of the head and the eyes always sit equidistantly either side of that line. They're just a broad guideline. You can change how you want to draw your features as you see fit. But as you can see, I tend to stick quite closely to those guidelines because it's very reassuring and you know that your faces are going to be fairly in proportion. So now I'm happy with the face, I'm putting in the hair and where the neck and shoulders should sit. I already know she's going to be wearing a crown, so I want her to have a nice head full of hair cascading down in that classic mermaid style. So now we come to my favourite bit, which is the fashioning of the crown. So when you draw something complex like this, you choose your main large features that you know for sure you want in there, such as the starfish and the large shell on the left and the hard coral branching crown. Then the rest is almost like filler, where I do little shells, which are essentially small spirals, little circles for barnacles and so on and so forth. That's the best way to do it. You've got to bear in mind also that the scale of this drawing is really small. The face is literally less than three centimeters across. So there isn't that much room to be able to do too much detailed work. So now that I've done all the sort of rough sketch mapping out of the drawing, I can go in with my HB 0.5mm tip to really start to define the features of my Mermaid Queen and get in there in the crown. That's where you'll see me use line weight because I will use the 0.5mm tip to shade in between all those structures in the crown to make it look more realistic. The other great thing about using that fine pencil is you can really go to town in terms of doing the mermaid hair and getting all those beautiful strands defined. So initially I used the pencil to outline all the main structures of the crown, including this beautiful hard coral headpiece. Then I start filling in the in-between spaces with teeny tiny little circles and spirals to give you that suggestion of seashells and barnacles sitting on the crown. Because the main mermaid subject is quite detailed, I wanted something simple for the background. So I just drew some vague outlines of seaweed coming from the bottom and the top, really to blend into the background to suggest there's something there. 
and here is the first Finnish mermaid queen. So I start drawing her sister on the opposite side of the double page spread. Again it's a circle with the direction of the head slightly leaning to one side. And then once my guidelines are in place I can start to block in her main features. I am hoping that for the viewer seeing the repetition of doing these faces will help you acclimatize to how I create these portraits but I do have a huge number of videos now where I show how I draw little characters sometimes they're more cartoon like proportions others I do where they're more realistic but generally I always start with the Loomis guidelines so there is some connection there you can always leave me a comment in the section below if there is anything in particular that you would like for me to show you. So on the subject of commenting, it would be great if you guys left me some feedback just so that I know I'm doing the right sort of things or let me know if there's something you're not totally happy with or where I could improve. And it will mean that my content does get better for you and it'll also help with the whole YouTube noticing my channel type thing. Oh, and a nice like or subscribe wouldn't go amiss either. <laughs> so as you can see, I pretty much put the same elements in this mermaid's crown as I did with the first one. Made sure there's a starfish and little shells and barnacles. So now we're with the mechanical pencil to define all those features before we go on to the painting stage. I added this cute little detail of a strand of pearls coming from her hair just as an extra difference between the two sisters. And now I'm defining the elements of the crown with the mechanical pencil and making sure I shade in between so that you can get a sense of the 3D nature of the crown. And here we have the two finished queens on the page in full view and you can see that Dutch door in the middle where I'm going to put all my bullet journaling. So after all that drawing it is now time to paint. So I'm going to start with the flesh tones as I usually do and that involves using a yellow ochre, a scarlet and white to mix up a pinky peach and a pale peach and a dark peach. I used my quill brush and applied the palest peach first as a base and then drop in the darker colours wherever I need to shade the face. So I'll put a darker pinky peach over the bridge of the nose and under the eyes to suggest those areas are going backwards which all adds to the overall 3D effect that you're after. So once dry I add some burnt sienna and blue to deepen the skin tones and also to create the darks that I need for the eyelashes. Burnt sienna is particularly useful when you do mix it with those flesh tones because it does create those deeper, richer tones that work really well for the shadows like under the chin and under the lips. And you can get a grey colour that I'm using there to shade the eyeballs, mixing French ultramarine and burnt sienna which is a brown. So I'm just using a peach here to blend all those colours together to get a uniform look. So now we're going on to the hair and I am using that brown and blue mix that I've referred to uh, all over the hair and in the crown. It's such a good dark basically. I don't, I'm not really a fan of using black so I do like to use this colour mix very often. And I actually really loved the way the hair turned out because it had that sort of rippled dappled look as though the water and light were shimmering all over the hair. I think using a mix of those two colours made it look so much more interesting. So now I'm using coloured pencils just to add a little bit of blush to the cheeks and lips. And then we'll be going on to painting the crown. 
for the crown i mix up two pastel colors one a lilac and one a pale blue and i use those two colors to paint in all the areas where i feel it would be in the shade so example in the grooves of the shell or in between a couple of the elements and then I use white gouache again with my finest brush and paint all the highlights. This does give a little bit of dimension when you're looking at it. I also use the white gel pen where I need to because it's such a good opaque white paint and because it's got a finer nib you can really get some details in and if you catch it while it's still wet you can dissolve it and blend it with other colours using a fine brush. So it is a really useful tool. If you're interested in how I do mix colours using this rather basic gouache paint set, uh, I would suggest looking at the video linked above where I do a swatch of all the paints that are in the set and show you some colour theory on how I mix the colours to get some beautiful tertiaries and neutrals out of it. Here I'm using a very fine tipped brown gel pen its tip is actually 0.28 mil so it's very fine and I use this to get in and define all the dark spaces in the crown and do the strands of the hair I really love how she's coming along now and I'm really thinking about creating a sticker or bookmarks from these two mermaid queens because I really fell in love with them I also want to basically do them larger than life size if I can, if I have the time. So now we're on to the background. I use a mix of Prussian blue and burnt sienna. So it gives you this really beautiful deep blue green. I do a light mottled wash all over the background and then mix a touch more Prussian blue so it's more concentrated and use a quill brush to put in those seaweed fins and fronds. I'm careful to make sure that the seaweed doesn't overpower the picture so that the mermaid really is the main emphasis and focal point. I'm just using a watercolour pencil to define some of the veins of the seaweed. I should have all the materials I've used for this video linked in the description below, so make sure you do check that out. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time defining the crown against the background so that you can clearly see it. I'm using a purple watercolour pencil for that and then a wet brush just to blend it where I need to and then you'll see I'll be using my white gel pen to highlight certain areas again and my brown gel pen with the fine tip is really good for putting in those darks and defining those lines I did a similar technique when I did my lovebirds you just sort of outline a little bit of the shape of the bird not all of it so it just gives you the impression that it is a 3d shape and for the finishing touch I use the white gel pen to apply little white dots just to give that mysterious magical look so I just want to show you that it's exactly the same painting techniques for both the mermaid queen so I didn't show you the whole thing again otherwise the video would have an extremely long run time so after a few finishing touches we're going to be going on to painting the background of the Dutch door pages for my actual bullet journal part of the spread I don't like to waste the paint so when you fight when you mix up all those colors it tends to give you a nice tertiary so that whatever color bright colour you add to that it will be a more toned down version so I did that and applied a bit of white and blue to get the sort of muted pastel blue which I think really complements the main paintings of the mermaid queens really really well so now I'm actually doing the setup itself for this week 
and I use a highlighter pen for all the headers which will be for the separate days of the week and add the dates in with a fine liner pen that matches the whole spread. And here we have the finished Mermaid Queen spread. I think it looks amazing and I cannot wait to do a larger version on watercolour paper personally. I really think they look spectacular and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial as much as I have. Next week it's going to be the June Plan With Me monthly spread. So I look forward to seeing you and hope you can join me. Bye for now.